The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service... By the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In a recent talk, Thomas I. Parkinson, president of the Equitable Life Assurance Society, remarked, Self-reliant citizens living in their own mortgage-free homes are the cornerstone of a free country. That is why, of all the manifold services rendered by the Equitable Society to its four million members, one which I rank near the top in importance is the Equitable's Assured Home Ownership Plan. In about 14 minutes, I'll be back to tell you homeowners about the Equitable Society's famous Assured Home Ownership Plan that President Parkinson considers so important. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Illegal Entry. Its title, The Continental Killer. Shortly after the turn of the century the then small city of Los Angeles, California, made an experiment in law enforcement which has since been copied by local police throughout the country. At that time, Los Angeles appointed a girl named Alice Wells to its force and gave her the rank of policewoman. She was the first of her sex ever to serve in any police department. But the obvious advantages of the move and the fine work she did caused other cities to follow. Until now, there are thousands on the rolls of local police in every one of our 48 states. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is brought to you because it tells of the exploits of one of these women who have made law enforcement their profession, a woman assigned to helping track down a dangerous hoodlum. Tonight's file opens in the hold of a large freighter which has just docked at an eastern city after a rough ocean crossing. It is late at night. The ship's hold is filled with crates and one man. In the half-light, he can be seen creeping cautiously toward a ladder. Sure he has remained undiscovered, the man starts up the ladder to the deck, pausing every few steps to listen. Finally, he reaches the deck. There is no one in sight. He scrambles out of the hold and walks furtively toward the gangplank. He's almost there when... Hey, you! Huh? What do you want? Nothing. I'm going ashore. Who are you? Uh, One of the firemen. i never seen you before. It's a big boat. Well, let's have your papers. Uh, Why, uh... I left them downstairs. Uh, I don't need them. Hey, I got orders. Nobody off without papers. Look, I'm in a hurry. Can't help it. You're not going down this gangplank without... Yes, I am. Me... A half hour later, at a dance hall in the Midtowns district, an attractive blonde hostess is coming off the floor when a man approaches. Oh, but when you... No questions, just dance. When did you get back? Tonight. How? Stowed away on a freighter. Oh, they'll ship you out again. They're gonna find me. You're gonna stay around here? Yeah. Where? You gotta find a place. You need some dough? No, I'm okay. I, uh, brought you a present. Yeah. Oh, Joe... What a beautiful pin. You're supposed to wear it on dresses. Honey, I'm putting it on right now. <laughs> Sally. What's the matter? A cop came in. Huh? Oh, he's okay. 
You know him? Yeah, he's in and out every night. What for? To see if there's any fights. Well, I better duck anyway. Where are you living? Same place. I'll talk to you later. I'm through at one. Okay. I'll call you when I find a hideout. following day at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor returns to his desk from the teletype room to find Police Detective Lieutenant Harry Conway waiting. Oh, hello, Harry. Uh, hi, Jim. <laughs> what brings you up here? Well, your agent in charge wants you to handle something with me. Huh? Well, good. Fire away. We got a complaint last night that a watchman on a freighter at Pier 19 had been slugged. Yeah? I went over to get the story, but he was unconscious. Where'd this uh, freighter come from? Europe. Mm -hmm. Whoever did the slugging went down the gangplank and got away. What's the FBI angle, Harry? Well, the stowaway might be Joe Nawada. Nawada? Uh, he's that bank robber they deported a year and a half ago. Since then, you've identified him as the robber of a bank upstate. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. We want him for a local holdup. Uh, I don't know him. I do. He's tough, but he's got a gun. All right, what makes you think it was him on the freighter? Oh, well, the watchman came to this morning and gave me a partial description. It could have fitted Nawada. Well, is that all? No. I found a corner of the hole somebody'd use for living quarters during the crossing. Oh? There were food wrappings, crumbs, and a couple of feet away, a blood-stained handkerchief. I took it to our lab. They said the stains were made by type ABRH negative blood, and that's his grouping. That's good investigation. Here. Yeah, but it doesn't cinch it. Well, only one person in a thousand has that type. It's good enough to base a guess on. I hope so. But if it was Nawada, we still have no idea where he was headed. Well, have you uh, checked on his friends? <laughs> Most of them are still in jail. He'd need some help to stay under. The one other possible lead is old girlfriends are on. They're in town? She's a hostess at the West Side Dance Hall. Her name's uh, Sally Baker. Well, she should be worth watching. One of my men is there under surveillance. I planted a policewoman in the dance hall. Good. She starts there tonight. What's her name, Harry? Uh, Sergeant Martha Wheeler. Uh, here. I brought along her picture. Oh, fine, thanks. Why don't you go up and see her? What time does the dancing start? Seven. Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> About this dance. Got a ticket? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Go, Miss Wheeler. Huh? Jim Taylor, FBI. Oh. We're on the Nawada case, too. Welcome. Thank you. Which one is Sally Baker? Uh, let's see. Oh, look over to the bar. See the blonde just to the left? Uh, sitting alone on the first table? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Have you gotten to talk to her yet? Not about her friend. Well, let's dance over that way, huh? Okay. Like me to turn my ankle? Yeah, it'll be a good idea. Oh! Oh! Hey, what happened? Oh, my ankle. Help me off, will you? Oh, sure. Come on. Oh, just sit me down someplace. How about this table, okay? Oh, what's the matter, kid? Turned my ankle. There you are. Oh, thanks, mister. Well, that's okay. Except I still got half a ticket worth of dance coming. I'll finish it with you. Oh? Huh? Thanks a lot, Sally. That's okay. Come on, honey. All right. Hey, I'm glad I switched. You dance better than she does. She's new. Oh? You been up here before? No, I, I just hit town. Didn't think I ever seen you. Ah, oh, you got such a good memory. For faces. Looks like you got good taste, too. The perfume? Uh, I mean the pin. Oh, it's beautiful, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, you can't tell costume stuff today from the real thing. Oh, this ain't costume. Huh? A friend of mine just brought it back from Europe. Well, you're mighty lucky having a friend like that. What's he do, anyway? I mean... How can you afford to buy the real McCoy for you? Okay, mister. Okay, mister, that's your ticket's worth. Got any more? Uh, no. Come back when you have. Did you 
see Martha Wheeler, Jim? Yeah, Harry, but she hasn't gotten anything. Well, we know the stowaway was Joe Nawada. What? The doctors let us interview the watchman again. He made a positive eye dent this time. Well, then we've got a lead. Oh, what's that? Sally Baker's been in touch with him. Oh? Yeah, we swapped some small talk during a dance. She's wearing an expensive-looking pin and told me a friend of hers had just brought it back from Europe. Well, if she saw Nawada, it must have been last night. Well, how long have you had surveillance on her? Since this morning, when we first thought it might be Joe. Oh, well, then if we sit tight... I'll get it. Agent Taylor. This is Martha Wheeler. Sally Baker just got a phone call. From who? I don't know. But right after it, she went to the boss and said she was sick. She's been excused for the night. Where are you calling from? A phone booth on the floor. Oh, oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? Anybody covering the alley behind this place? No. No, I don't think so. Why? Sally's going out the back way. I I'll follow her. Okay. But, but look, I want to warn you. Even if you see Nawada, don't try to make an arrest. You're not to take any chances. Cap! Cap! Hi, Sally. Huh? I took off, too. Oh, his ankle's killing me. Yeah, they hurt. Cap! Cap! Say, how about splitting it? Splitting what? The cab. It's murder getting one this time of night. I'm sorry, kid. Get your own. Taxi! Uh, oh, where, where are you going? I'll drop you. No, thanks. Heavy date? No, I'm going home to rest. Well, how about coming to my place? I'll make some coffee. No, thanks. Well, well, if you're feeling bad, I hate to see you all alone. Look, I like being alone. Taxi! Good night, kid. Hello? Hi, Joe. Where are you? In a drugstore on Broadway. Sally, I told you to meet me here. I can't. I'm being followed. By who? Some dame from the dance hall. Who is she? I don't know. Tonight was her first night. Are you sure she's telling you? Positive. She quit tonight, same time I did. She met me in the street and wanted to split the cab with me. So? Well, I brushed her off and she got her own cab. I had my driver zigzag and I cut back past the dance hall. Her hack was right on our bumper all the way. Then how'd you get to Broadway? I blew the cab and started to walk. She paid off her cab on the next block and followed me. And I went up one street and down another. Mm. Sounds like a cop. And she's still telling you? Yeah. What'll I do? Let's see. I could go home and, and maybe... No, no. Her... Let her keep telling you. Huh? Yeah. Just make sure she don't lose you. Where'll I go? Let her follow you down this block past my place and under the bridge. Any special spot? Yeah, walk... Like you're heading for those benches by the river. I'll do the rest. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file, which shows how your FBI helps promote America's security. Now, a special message to homeowners about mortgages. Did you ever stop to think what makes a truly modern mortgage? To be really modern, a mortgage plan must give you a method of paying off your mortgage years ahead of time. And the modern mortgage plan must give both you and your family adequate protection against foreclosure and disaster. How'd you like to have that all wrapped up in one package? You can in the Equitable Society's famous Assured Home Ownership Plan. If you are one of the select group of homeowners who can qualify for this money-saving, home-saving plan, here are four of the many benefits. First benefit, this plan provides a painless way to pay off the mortgage years ahead of schedule. Here's the way this plan works for you. The Equitable Plan combines a low-cost first mortgage and life insurance protection. The insurance element creates a cash loan fund which increases steadily. Each year, the mortgage grows smaller and the cash loan fund bigger, 
After about 14 years, I made a happy discovery. My cash loan fund had grown big enough to pay off my 20-year mortgage. Second benefit, the cash loan fund in the Assured Home Ownership Plan is a friend in need when sickness or unemployment threaten home security. You should have seen the doctor and hospital bills I paid one year. Don't know how I could have met my mortgage payments without my cash loan fund. Third benefit, if the owner dies, his widow doesn't inherit a mortgage. She inherits her home free and clear. What's more, the Equitable Society not only cancels the mortgage, but also returns to the widow every cent her husband had paid to reduce the principal. Lastly, the mortgage draws interest not at 6, not at 5, but at 4%, and closing costs are low. Naturally, a plan like this can't be offered to everyone. Your home must be in a neighborhood of stable realty values. Your Equitable Society representative will be glad to tell you whether you can qualify for this money-saving, home-saving, assured home ownership plan. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Continental Killer. The basic reason for bringing you these case histories from the files of your FBI is to educate you in the field of crime prevention. Many files show that at one point, it could have been a different story had the lawbreaker been aided. Jonah Waters' criminal career did not begin with his illegal re-entry into the country, nor even with the crime for which he found himself deported. It began at the age of nine, shortly after he was brought to the United States. Sent to a reform school for a petty offense, he was taught a trade, the trade of crime. That happens far too often for it to be either a coincidence or wholly the fault of the imprisoned youngster. Does the reform school in your community actually reform, or is it a finishing school for future criminals? As a citizen, it is your right and your duty to find out and to help correct the situation if it needs correcting. Make today's youth tomorrow's citizen, not tomorrow's public enemy. Tonight's FBI file continues a few minutes later at police headquarters in the office of Lieutenant Harry Conway. Time is it, Jim? Oh, I make it 10 after 9. I thought maybe my watch stopped. Did you happen to notice when it was she called from the dance hall? Yeah, it was about 5 after 8. Over an hour. Mm. Why doesn't she call back? Harry, you said she was very capable. She is. Well, then give her a chance. But she could have gone anywhere in the city by now. Look, we're not even sure the Baker girl's on her way to see no water. All we know is she didn't go home. Tell me, how good is Sergeant Wheeler with a gun? <sighs> Better than most men in the department. She got one with her? Uh-huh. If anything happens oh, to no, her... Wait, I... wait a minute. Don't get back on that kick. I can't help it. Just... Uh, maybe that's her. Lieutenant Conway... Lieutenant, this is the emergency hospital calling. There's a girl here says she's Sergeant Martha Wheeler. What? She was found unconscious under the bridge. The ambulance has just brought her in. I'll be right there. Are you the gentleman to see Miss Wheeler? Yes. She's in this room. Thank you. Come on, Jim. Go ahead, Harry. Thanks. Hello, Martha. Sorry, Lieutenant. No, never mind that kind of talk. Uh, you know Agent Taylor. Yes. Nice to see you alive. Thanks. I'm lucky. The doctor says it's only a scalp wound. How'd it happen, Miss Willie? Well, uh, Sally Baker led me under the bridge. By the time I, I suspected anything, no water came up from behind and slugged me. You sure it was him? Yes. I didn't pass out right away. After I was hit, I, I heard Sally come back and she addressed the man going through my purse as Joe. You hear anything else? Well, half 
after he took my gun, he said to Sally, let's walk back to the room. Are you sure he said walk? Uh Uh-huh. He didn't say where the room was, did he? I don't know. That's when I stopped hearing anything. Mm -hmm. Harry, come here, let's review this. Now, Wada said walk. Now, he knows we're searching for him. I don't think he'd try walking very far. Mm, Probably not. So the room has to be fairly close to where Miss Wheeler here was hid. Uh Uh-huh. That means it's his room, because Sally Baker lives across town. There are quite a few rooming houses in that section, Jim. Well, let's start combing them. You got the knife? Here. Hmm. Not very sharp. You said to tell the landlady you needed it to open a package. That's what she gave me. I still don't see what you need a knife for. We only got six bullets. So? Well, we might use more on the trip. The what? We're leaving here. For where? The farmers. I hid out there once. He's got a cabin just north of here. Well, ain't you forgetting something? What? You belted out a cop a little while ago. We couldn't get to Main Street, let alone a cabin outside of town. Honey, we're going to the farmer's call a cab. A cab? Do you think a cab driver will take us way up there? Sally, we now got a gun and a knife. I'd just like to hear him turn us down. Jim? Yeah. I want to clean this room real good before he left. Well, I came up with something. An old lady upstairs said she saw Joe and the girl get into a cab. No one sat behind the wheel. Huh? Yeah, he had a gun in his hand. As he got into the cab, he handed it to Sally Baker. She directed the driver to climb into the back. Why didn't the woman upstairs call the police? Oh, she was too frightened. Yeah. Give you any description of the cab? Yeah, it was a red and yellow one. One of those new radio cabs. Those are the ones that are equipped for shortwave? That's right. Harry, you know anything about that setup? I mean, how the company contacts the drivers? Uh, yeah. When a passenger calls into the main office, the dispatcher sends out a general call. The cab nearest to the passenger's address takes it. What happens when the passenger's picked up? Well, the driver calls in. Hmm. Let's contact that dispatcher, huh? Then he won't know which cab came here, Jim. Yeah, I know. But if word goes out for every cab to call in and one doesn't, we'll know the license number of the one that's been stolen. Harry, I think as soon as we notify the dispatcher, we ought to get over to their main office and work from there. How far is the place from here? Just on this road. Cabs in the East 20s and 30s. Call at 111 East 32nd. Apartment 3. Can't we shut that thing off? No. Why not? We'll know if they're looking for us. Suppose they are. We'll ditch it. With the driver in the trunk? Sure. He could die, Joel. That's right. Well, then why flirt with a murder rap? To get a murder rap, they got to find a body, right? Sure. Well, this guy in his cab will be at the bottom of the lake. I just heard from half the cabs already. Uh, how many's that, Jim? 35. Still plenty to go. Headquarters have anything on that suburban alarm? Seven radio cabs outside the city have been stopped. No sign of Nawada, though. Now, time's on his side now. I know. We're stuck till we find out which cab he's got. Uh, when will the dispatcher give us another report? In five minutes. Four cabs to go. What's the word on them? The sets may be out. Can't the dispatcher tell? No, he's getting license numbers on each of them for us now. Good. When they're ready, we'll get an alarm out on all four. We don't need that alarm, Harry. Why not? Three of those four cabs just called in. Come on. Where are we going? Back to my office for some equipment. Nawada's got cab 38, and this cab was last seen going north outside the city limits by one of the last men who called in. slept a week. You hungry? Starved. They have groceries still in the cab? No, I just went out and got them. 
The cab guy's still alive. Did you open the trunk? No, but he heard me and started yelling and pounding. Hmm. Tough customer. That wouldn't be so good if anybody happened by here. I know. Well, I guess I'd better do something about him. Joe, I wish you wouldn't. Sally, we've been all through that. Cook me up some eggs, and I'll take the cab down to the lake and dump it. Okay. I can eat four eggs. Right. Sally. The trunk of the cab is open. It's what? The trunk is open. The cab driver's gone. You let him out, didn't you? No. You're lying. You didn't want to see me knock him off. Honest, Joe, I had nothing to do Tell with it. Tell him the truth, no matter. Don't move. Harry. Better put the cuffs on him. Right. Joe. We released the cab driver. What is this? We're both under arrest. Joe Nawata was sentenced to a federal prison for 25 years on the previous charge against him of bank robbery. His girlfriend, Sally Baker, was turned over to local police authorities. Special Agent Taylor and Detective Conway were able to locate the cabin being used as the hideout because there is in the scientific arsenal of law enforcement an instrument called a range locator, an instrument which detects the direction in which a radio signal is beamed. By using two range locators some distance from each other, it is possible to chart the exact point from which any signal is emanating. A fact which brought both Agent Taylor and Detective Conway to the shortwave transmitter, which had not been turned off in the stolen taxi cab. All other cabs turned their transmitters off while the range locators were being used. Perhaps tonight's dramatization told you why the Federal Bureau of Investigation closes a file only on a particular case and not on the people involved. For the file is never really closed on a criminal, never really closed until each of his criminal depredations have been investigated and the facts presented to appropriate tribunals. Now, one last word to homeowners. What wouldn't you give to be able to say... No more mortgage on my house. I own it. Free and clear. Why wait till you're an old man before you can say these words? Ask your Equitable Society representative to explain how the Assured Home Ownership Plan provides for paying off the mortgage years ahead of time. Or send a postcard, care of this station, to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, racketeering. Its title, The Innocent Hijacker. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Walter Catlett, Ted DeCorsia, Isabel Jewell, Marie Windsor, and Carlton Young. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Innocent Hijacker on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.